Thank you, Mr. Timekeeper. Mr. Timekeeper, can we have the times of the two speeches, please? Uh, Ed was slightly over at 7 minutes 36, so I, I would ask your discretion. And uh, Paul and Baby uh, was 6 minutes 30. So um, uh, Ed was 6 seconds over. So okay. I think since there are only two participants this evening, we'll, we'll go without the vote. Next up, we have not a prepared speech as such, although it will be delivered as a speech, but it's actually some club officer training, which will be delivered by Simon Day. Simon. On Saturday the 6th of July, so just a couple of weeks ago, I had the opportunity to come here on a Saturday afternoon to experience what we call club officer training. For those of you that aren't familiar with this, in Toastmasters, every six months or so, we have club officer training. This is an opportunity for Toastmasters around the region to gather together and to discuss what's happening in their clubs. Best practice, things that we've learned, challenges that we've negotiated, and principles that we've uncovered in our clubs that we could share with each other and learn. While I was there, I had an interesting experience. And I want to share with you some of what I took away from that. There are two main things you experience when you go to a training session. Number one is that you pick up pointers. And number two is that you relearn principles. I want to very briefly share some pointers that I picked up from the session. But I also want to impress upon you some of the principles that I was impressed with that Saturday. The point is a relatively simple. The first thing I think would be good for the club to know is that there is going to be created a Dropbox or a Google Drive for Division N. So clubs from across the Yorkshire and Midlands region can share resources together. So if a club finds something that's useful, they can put it into the Google Drive and can share it with all the clubs across the region. As members, we will have access to this. So I intend to set up a folder with articles on public speaking, with useful YouTube videos. And we can store all of this information on a Google Drive to which we can all have access, which would then be a wonderful central place where we can learn this craft of speaking and the administration of Toastmasters better. Within that Google Drive will be placed in an annual calendar for the region. So we know what events are taking place at area and division level. This will be useful for our club's planning. For example, if we know when the division is going to be holding a contest, and we know when the area is going to be holding their contest, we can plan to have our club contest further in advance, we can promote it better, we can have better engagement, and members will be more enthused about something they have more notice of. So a calendar will be very useful. There is also going to be placed on there things like a committee handover programme. So that at the end of every Toastmasters <coughs> year, when the committee leaves and a new committee is to be appointed, there is a time for it as to when the new committee is invited to attend committee meetings, shadowing that can take place, meetings that can be held, and that <coughs> process becomes a lot smoother. There are some wonderfully useful things that are going to be placed on there. And this was made known to me at the training. And so now I will look for that, the establishment of that Google Drive, I will send you the details, and it will be a central place we can all go to. These are the pointers that I picked up, these are the administrative things. But there were some principles, and as I sat in that room that day, there were some things that I was sharply reminded of, that I think beg exploration. I read a quote the other day on a post somebody had put on LinkedIn, and it said, never be the smartest person in the room. If you think you are, invite different people or find a different room. When I went to that training, I was not the smartest person in the room. There were people there with more experience than me, more knowledge than me, more skill than me. And yes, I was privileged to deliver a session, but for the rest of the time, I sat and I observed and I listened. Have you ever noticed that the word silent and the word listen are spelt with the same letters. If you want to listen effectively, you have to be silent at times. And as Toastmasters, we love to talk. 
My wife knows how much I love to talk. She can't shut me up at times. But sometimes it does well to listen. And for the vast majority of that session, I sat and I listened. And I got feedback. Not always feedback that was spoken, but feedback that came to me in the form of ideas from what was being presented. A training session holds up a mirror to your current self. And it allows you to see a reflection of what it is that you're doing. And you can sit there and you can think to yourself, am I doing everything I know that I could be doing? Or is there something I could be doing better? And a feedback session like that can make you do one of two things. You can choose to ignore the feedback, or you can choose to internalise it and take it on board and do something about it. There is a certain level of humility required to sit in a session like I sat in that Saturday and to take those principles on board and realise that we're not doing everything perfect. But that was a privilege and something that I've learned from. Where in your life could you have an opportunity to sit and be silent and listen and receive feedback from someone or some training that would make you better? I would encourage you to seek out that opportunity because sometimes they don't always come to us. We have to go looking for them. But if we can have that humility to go and to find something that will help us hold up that mirror, evaluate ourselves and do better, we are already on the way to offering back to the world what the world needs, which is leaders with character. The final principles I learned that Saturday, I will share in the form of a story. A couple of weeks ago, my family and I went to Ilkley Moor, Cowcow, beautiful part of Yorkshire. It was there that I proposed to my wife six and a half years ago, so it has a special place for us. And it was a privilege to go back with our two children and to realise how much our lives have changed in just six and a half years. But I encountered three scenarios during that day out with my family that we all encounter on our Toastmasters journey, or our journey to self-improvement, if you will. And I think they beg some discussion. My three-year-old son and I got to a rock face. We were looking up at it, and I saw him looking up at it, and he went, we're going up there. I said, yeah, we're going to climb it. And for a moment, I looked up at it and I thought, that's a long way to climb. But climb it, we did. And how? One step at a time, together, carefully, with my wife's support from the top, showing us where to go. There was a time where all of us were not here. We were at home on Google saying, help me with my public speaking. And Lee City Toastmasters came up. That was us looking at the bottom. Can I really get up there? Yes, you can. Because you're all here tonight. So what you've all done now is taken that first bit of climb. Your feet are off the ground. You're moving. Beware the voices that will encourage you to come back down. Because they will be there. They will be from the people behind you. They will be in your own mind. And they will say, don't climb that. Stupid idea. You don't know what's up there. Come back down. They cannot tell you anything about a climb they have never made. Don't listen to them. That's the first bit. You start to make that climb. And you've all started to make it. So give yourself credit where it's due. Then there's what I like to call the halfway house. I call it the Bon Jovi complex. We're halfway there. <laughs> there is a halfway house it's pleasant the view's nice there's nice music from inside pleasant conversation a beer garden you've made it that far give yourself a pat on the back if you want go in and have a drink by all means celebrate you've got somewhere but don't spend too long because you want to make the summer before nightfall so have a good time Celebrate, give yourself a pat on the back. But there will be people who walk into the halfway house who don't come back out. <coughs> or they come back out and go back down. Because they didn't give themselves the discipline to have one drink and leave it. And then they've got to make the summit. The third place you find yourself 
is on the climb between Halfway House and the summit. That is the hardest, loneliest, most gruelling part of the climb. It's tough. You get tired. You get frustrated. You question yourself. You wonder if you made the right choice. The summit seems to recede into the distance, never gets any closer. But you will get there if you have the courage and the character and the resilience to get there. Life is rewarding at the summit. And we got to that summit and we looked over most of Ilkley and the surrounding area and the view was breathtaking. I did not remember the pain of the climb. It was swallowed up by the sweetness and the triumph of reaching the top. Wherever you are on your individual journey, whether you are two feet from the ground at the rock face or you are two feet from the summit and you are gasping for air and you are tired and your muscles are burning and you wonder if you'll make those last two feet. Wherever you are, either of those extremes or anywhere in between, the only direction you need to move is forward. And the trick is to surround yourself with people and with influences that will encourage you to keep moving forward. Until eventually you are self-sustaining enough to keep driving yourself forward. Looking for people and influences that will build you is not weakness. Sometimes it takes great strength to change a friendship, to cut something or someone loose, to change a habit if that habit is not taking you where it needs to be. In a moment of silence on Saturday the 6th of July, I was reminded of those principles. And now I'm looking up the mountain. And I know it's a long climb. I know it'll be tough. But I'm looking into the eyes of people that I know can help keep. Thank you, Simon.